Take your Bible in your hand and, uh, you know, it amazes me that Christians today will say, you know, I just don't understand the Bible. I especially don't uh, understand that last, cha- uh, that, that last book of the Bible, Revelation, so I don't read it. And then someone else will say, well, I don't understand the Bible. I don't understand that first book of the Bible, Genesis, so I don't read it. Listen, folks. This is God's Word from cover to cover, amen? And every word of this book is absolutely true. And we need to understand what the book of Genesis says because in the book of Genesis, we find the creation ordinances or the orders given to us in creation. Now, many of these uh, we have already seen and uh, we will go over them all again, but today... We're going to look at a passage and a title of a message I entitled, The Days Before Noah. If you would stand with me, we look at Genesis chapter 4, verses 16 through 26, and seek to discern why God gave us these important words. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Folks, that's not a good thing to leave the presence of the Lord. Sounds like our nation today, leaving the presence of the Lord. Sounds like our world today, leaving the presence of the Lord. And dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Now there are multiple Enochs, let's not be confused. This is Cain's son Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mahuahel, and Mahuahel begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents and such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah she also bare Tubalcon, as instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubalcain was Namah. And Lamech said unto his wife, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. This was a violent man. And why would he say such a thing to his wife? Maybe to threaten her? We live in a day of, of abuse in homes. I believe this man was the, was the author and father of that. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also, There was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Notice that. When Seth came, and Seth had children, then, instead of leaving the Lord, now they are calling upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time this morning. Help us to understand what these words have to do with us today. Father, I pray, Lord, that we would all be ready. Father, that uh, when that sound of the trumpet comes, and Father, whenever that uh, shout from heaven comes, may we be ready for your return. Father, I pray again that if there's someone here that does not know you in a personal way, does not know for certain that they have eternal life and will go to heaven, When they die, Father, I pray that today would be their day to receive you as Lord and Savior. And we pray this in the wonderful, the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. 
Amen. You may be seated. Well, before Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins, he preached and told his followers what it was going to be like as the end of time approached. And he said this. He said it will be as the days of Noah. In fact, if you were to look today at what's called the Olivet Discourse, when Jesus was there on the Mount of Olives and, and preaching and sharing with his disciples that there would come a time when this age would be wrapped up, when there would be a shout from heaven, there would be the trump of the angel, and, and the Lord would descend for his children. Listen, there is a clear blueprint for the end of times and and here we see what he had to say. Now you may be thinking, Pastor, what does that have to do with that passage you just read? Well, the answer lies in what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, Jesus made it crystal clear that there was a comparison between the days we have just read about and the things that the world will be like at the time of His coming. And so we need to observe the characteristics that were prevailing at the time of Noah's day. Let me share with you that we saw a division, didn't we? A division between Cain and his offspring and Seth and his offspring. You see, Cain and his offspring were moving away from the Lord, but Seth and his offspring were returning to the Lord. Well, let's look, because the days before Noah were characterized by prosperity. Church, listen to me. We've got a color barrier in our nation today. And as I travel around Uli in this area, and I knock on doors in trailer parks and apartment complexes and in homes, the color barrier is the color green. You see, some people have it, and some people don't. It is amazing to me that that's what really separates people. When we see the people coming through our food pantry more than 13,000 last year, hundreds of families. We see that color barrier, the color green. And some people are, uh, have enough in order to, to care for themselves, and, and, and some need help. Listen, I, I see battered women, and their skin color may all be different, but once again, the color green really uh, is a difference between those who have no hope and have no help and those that are able to make it on their own. Today we are living in an age of prosperity, but yet there are those who still need help. Jabal was the first to introduce the domestication of cattle. He was the first rancher. Now, because of ranching and because of, uh, of uh, his ability to domesticate the cattle, and remember, here in the book of Genesis, people lived a long time. And it was amazing what they could set out and accomplish when you got a 900 years to do it. You get a little longer than we get today. And so, this was a time of material prosperity. Because they were raising animals. They were, he wasn't just a shepherd, he was a rancher. He had others. Did you catch that? He was the father of these, uh, these folks. He was the instigator of, uh, of those that were domesticating animals. And so it was a time of material prosperity. And Jabal cornered the market on cattle. Well, we are living in an age of abundance today, aren't we? In spite of the fact that, that, that many come through our food pantry and many come to our clothes closet, and many are helped through our Gracie's Kitchen. The truth is, as I look around at people, even those coming in the food pantry, I don't see any starving people. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it, we are living in a nation where, uh, where, where people have an abundance. 
In fact, the median income for an American family of four has finally gone up this past year. It, you see, from 1999 through 2017, people were going down. But last year, an amazing upsurge in the economy, as we have all seen. And, and now, the average median, or the median income for American family of four is $59,039. You ever wonder where they get that $39 from? It, it, it's just amazing to me how the uh, uh, economists come up with such numbers. But, but this number uh, uh, eclipses the 58655 that it was in 1999. Did you see the latest employment report? Anybody see that? You, you see, you're not going to get this on the news because they're not going to tell you the truth. But, but uh, if you pay attention, the employment report, the lowest unemployment levels in history, in history, for minorities, for Hispanics, uh, for, for all kinds of people, and especially, it's amazing, they called the recession a man session because men who were 50 years old had, had little chance of finding a job, but now people are going back to work. Unemployment is literally at full employment at 3.9% unemployment, the lowest unemployment levels in decades. Well... There's another gauge I use about prosperity, and Tony, I just go down to Walmart. And if you go down to Walmart, you can't find the space. I bet you meet everybody in town, don't you, down there? Uh, let, let me tell you something, and you go to Walmart, you see everybody, amen? I've often thought, instead of going out and knocking on doors, I ought to just stand at Walmart and hand stuff out, provided they don't arrest me, and, and invite people to church. Because everybody's down at Walmart. Because people are spending money again. In fact, people throughout the entire world, not just America, are living longer, they're eating better, and they're living better than ever before, according to economist Julian Simon. Why, we are living in an age of prosperity. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be when I come again. We are living in days of prosperity. Second of all, the days before Noah were characterized by pleasure. <laughs> you see, no longer were they just out uh, picking fruit off trees and, uh, and scavenging. Now they've got uh, cattle that are being uh, domesticated. There's food in the market. And so now there's time, and once again, when you live 900 years, you got lots of time. So Jubal had time, and he invented musical instruments, and he was the father of the entertainment industry, I'm going to tell you. You see, did you see where he invented these musical instruments so that people could have the enjoyment of, of music? Now, we are living in a day in an age where people are seeking pleasure. <laughs> in fact, in 2017, $12.4 billion were spent on movies. I'm going to tell you something, they didn't get much of that from me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but movies, people are just uh, uh, looking for something to fill their time and fill their mind they want to be entertained by Hollywood, I mean, Hollywood people. It, it, it is amazing to me the, uh, the desire to be entertained today. Not only are they entertained by Hollywood, but they also are entertained by, by all kinds of other things. In cities across America, there are statues that are worshipped by people's money. There are lions. There are bears. There are tigers, and yes, there are elephants up in Alabama, and there are jaguars in Jacksonville, and people will take their money and they will bow down at the feet of these animals across America, and they will give up hard-earned money 
uh, to park their cars and, and go see cheerleaders and go see football players and, and, uh, and, and just be entertained. Folks, listen to me. We are entertaining ourselves to death. Do you realize that? In a world where we could be meeting the needs of others and sharing the gospel that would fill people's hearts, we're more interested in being entertained. And if we're not going to ball games and watching movies and streaming entertainment into our homes over streaming players, listen to me, we're finding some other way to be entertained. We are in a pleasure, entertainment, mad society. Would you agree with that? Amen. Well, the days before Noah were characterized by prosperity. They were characterized by pleasure. And they were also characterized by progress. Now notice this. Tubal Cain discovered how to extract metal from ore. And he invented the smelting business. He was the father of the steel industry. Before Andrew Carnegie, there was Tubal Cain. And, and, and you see, with the extraction of ore and, and the ability to make metals, there were greater farm implements. There were greater armaments as well. These were the days preceding the flood. Let me tell you, we are living in an age of advancement. And, and it's coming at us at such a rapid pace. Oh, I tell you what, how come they just can't leave things alone? My wife gets to hear this from me all the time. Things used to work just fine. Went out and had to buy a new gas can. Couldn't figure out how to work the nozzle. <laughs> all I want is a plastic tube that you can pour the gas. But no, they got all these fancy contraptions on it, and you can't figure it out. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You go, and all you want is a simple light bulb. You didn't want an LED, and you didn't want to have, you just wanted a light bulb. You can't find a light bulb. And then to top it all off yesterday, all I wanted was a sprinkler head. One that rotates with a little screw. No, they can't make it that easy now. Now, now you've got to figure out how to lift it up and twist it this way and twist it that way before you can uh, figure the whole thing out. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. We are living in a day of advancements, and things are advancing so fast I can't keep up with them. I just, uh, working on a church computer, bought a year ago, just in case. It still has Windows 7 on it. Amen. Last thing I want to do is have to learn how to use Windows 10. Why, about the time I start learning how to use that, they'll come out with something else. How many of y'all notice that every time they, that you pick up an electronic device, it's got to update itself? That way the government can spy on us better, amen? Uh, let, let, let me tell you, I, I'm just amazed at the constant advancements that we are living in. We are living in an age of advancement in every field of science, and engineering. Medical science, it's incredible the advancements that they're making. Why, they're making so many advancements now that you can't get in to see the doctor anymore. Y'all notice that? Uh, you try to make an appointment, and they say, well, we'll see you in three weeks. Well, I may not be hurting in three weeks. You better see me now. Uh, let, let, me, let me tell you, there are advancements in medicine, and, and in all reality, I, I'm thankful for the advancements. Aren't you? I know it can be confusing, and if you're like me and you're getting a little older, it can be a little irritating, but, uh, but, but I'm thankful for the many advancements. We are living in a time of unprecedented advancements. And, and in all reality, that's the way it was before Noah came. Things were advancing. They were developing a complex culture. They were building great buildings, and as we will see that... Uh, uh, they were able to, uh, to construct and learn how to do all kinds of things in future chapters. However, I want you to notice one other thing. In spite of the pleasure, in spite of the prosperity, 
in spite of of the progress, they were moving away from the Lord. Does that sound familiar? You see, we are living in a world with progress and prosperity and pleasure, but instead of people realizing that they're blessed by a holy God, they've turned their back and they're walking away from the Lord. And so that brings me to one more thing I want us to point out and look at today, and that's verse 24. In verse 24, we see that they finally came to the place that the time was characterized by perversion. And first of all, I want us to look at the spiritual perversion. As we look at the life of Cain, who was the father of this lineage that we just looked at, He was spiritually perverted. What do I mean by that? And I know we've already covered this. When Abel looked back at the the creation ordinance of a blood sacrifice, Cain showed up with a grain sacrifice. And when God said, Cain, your brother brought a blood sacrifice for sin, and you should have known to bring a blood sacrifice for sin. You need to go back and consider your ways. And instead of repenting, he got angry. Remember that? And God said, Cain, why are you angry? Why are you wroth? He was angry because he wanted to do religion his way. Spiritually, he didn't want to do it God's way. And he wasn't willing to repent and admit that he was wrong and then say that his brother was right. You see, the creation ordinance was that there needed to be a blood sacrifice for sin. Genesis 3.21 Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. You see, the the clothing of sewing fig leaves together would not cover their sin. And so God had to kill an animal. And death entered the world. And Adam and Eve had to watch as that first animal was killed. And death entered the world. And the blood was spilt. And it was a horrible sight. Cain didn't pay attention to the creation ordinance. He didn't care about the need for a blood sacrifice. He wanted God to accept whatever he brought to the altar. God said it doesn't work that way. You see, there are going to be many people on Judgment Day who are going to say, but God, I did this, and I was religious in this way and that way. God's going to say, In fact, this is recorded in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You see, there's only one way to come to the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. People say, but pastor, you're being very narrow. Listen, I'm not being narrow. Jesus said he's the only way. The Bible says there's no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved. Folks, there's not some other way. Only the blood sacrifice of Jesus on a rough, rugged cross who shed his rich royal blood to cover our sin. That's the only way of salvation. But you see, these were days of spiritual perversion. Jesus warned of a time like this. We see churches today that once preached the Word of God and now they've turned away from the creation ordinances. They've turned away from the Ten Commandments and they're even turning away from the gospel message of Jesus as the only means of salvation. And they preach how to have a better you. And how that how that it doesn't matter what you believe, just as long as you believe something. 
And listen to me, this is what Jesus said. Don't blame the pastor. If you don't like this message, blame the master because he said this in Matthew 24. He said, many will turn away from the faith and false prophets will appear and deceive many. People today are falling into apostasy. That word apostasy means a falling away. They're falling away from the word of God. They're falling away from the truth that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In fact, they are openly embracing satanic worship and the occult. They look to astrology and witchcraft and spiritism and demonic religions. And up in Michigan, about a year ago, they even built a statue to Satan himself. And people lined up for a block to get in to see. Folks, listen to me. Man was created to worship God. And when they aren't worshiping God, they will worship something. Because man is created to worship a holy God. And when they turn their back on God, they will worship something else. We are seeing that today. Not only was there spiritual perversion, but second of all, there was sexual perversion. You see, when mankind has looked everywhere else for something to worship, you know what they'll worship? <laughs> Themselves. And, and so people today, instead of worshiping the Creator, they worship the created. They'll worship their own selves. And so here we meet a man in this passage that we read today. Lamech. We are told that he violated another of the creation ordinances. You see, God made man male and female, one man and one woman to be married together. And Lamech said, you know what, I, I don't like that creation ordinance very well. I think I'm going to take two wives. I don't think he really thought that through because that many had two mother-in-laws. I'm just joking. But the truth was, he, he decided he didn't like what the creation ordinance of one man and one woman in a marriage relationship. And so he was the first to openly pervert God's plan. Now because I know human nature, he may not have been the first to engage in sexual perversion. But he was the first to openly declare it to the world. I don't care what God says. I want two wives. And so I'm just going to have me two wives. And I don't care what God thinks about it or anybody else. This is the first pervert mentioned in Scripture. How would you like to have your name in the Bible, being the first pervert? Well, that's what he was, Lamech. And the biblical standard of marriage is under attack today, too, by many who have fallen in the way of Lamech. There's all kinds of sexual perversion. You know, so often today when a pastor gets up and talks about sexual perversion, they say, well, there you go again, talking about homosexuality. Well, no, I'm first going to talk about heterosexuality because there's plenty of perverted heterosexuals too. Y'all see those two NFL cheerleaders on the Today Show? Anybody see a clip of that? <laughs> you see, there's been an accusation that the Washington Redskin cheerleaders went down and entertained a bunch of of uh, high dollar uh, supporters of the Redskins. And, and some people have accused them of being high paid escorts. And so they go on the Today Show and say, well, that all depends on what your perception of escort is. That sounds like Bill Clinton. That all depends on how, what your definition of is is. Well, folks, let me tell you, you're, you're either entertaining and escorting or you're not, amen? In an age of me too, you got those folks. Listen, that's just one more good reason to boycott the NFL. Amen? 
run an escort service maybe. I, I don't know. Listen, I don't know what they did down there in Mexico. But, but you check it out. That was a horrible interview for those two young women to go on TV. Well, that all depends on your perception of what escort means. Well, let me tell you, I didn't fall off the truck yesterday, amen? When you have to say something like that, something tells me things weren't quite right down in Mexico. Let me tell you, the standard of marriage as given by God, is under attack today from every corner. Would you agree with that? Amen. Listen, there is heterosexual perversion, polygamy, living together outside of marriage, fornication, and then, yes, there is homosexual perversion as well. Listen, we're living in a day and an age of every kind of perversion you can think of. Because people have decided God's way is not going to be my way. I'm going to do life my way. I want it the way I want it, when I want it, how I want it, with whoever I want it with. And folks, that's not what God's Word says. God said, I created the male and female, Adam and Eve. And we as Christians believe that marriage is between one man and one woman, and it should be until death do us part. Now you may be here today and you've had divorce. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I understand. Human relationships are difficult. And I'm glad that no matter what sexual perversion you may have been involved in, aren't you glad God forgives us of sin? Anybody here glad God forgives us of sin? Listen, I'm not asking you to raise your hand and give testimony. I just want to know if you're thankful that God forgives us. Amen. But because God forgives us, it also means that we have a responsibility to seek every day to do what's right. We're living in a day and an age like Sodom and Gomorrah. Recently, not one, but two Southern Baptist churches in Greensboro, South Carolina alone performed homosexual marriages. One of them is a Southern Baptist church that gave birth to the Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Listen to what 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce bakers, false accusers. We see a lot of accusing today. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, listen to this, from such turn away. If there was ever a day and an age when men did that which was right in their own eyes, friend, we're living in that day and time right now. Would you agree with that? The battle cry of today is, Preacher, don't tell us how to live. We want to do it my way. Listen, I'm not going to try and tell you how to live. I'm just going to preach what God has to say about how we're to live. I believe people in the last days are described in Romans chapter 1, 22 through 32. An African-American pastor who worked for the Centers of Disease Control preached, bivocational pastor, a medical doctor, preached on this passage. And our government fired him because his sermon was posted on YouTube. Listen to what this passage says. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator,
who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men. <laughs> Listen, that's what got that preacher fired for preaching about homosexuality. Listen to what the Bible says about that. Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet or was acceptable. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Listen, you want to say God... I'm free to do what I want to do. You know what God's going to say? Yes, you are. Go on. To do, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of every envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's where we are in our world today. Doesn't that describe America today? Doesn't that describe the world today? And you know where perversion leads? Ultimately, it leads to murder. Did you see what Lamech said? He said, I've killed people. He told his wife, I, I, I've killed people. We are living in a day and an age of murder. Have the days of Noah arrived again? Can you see the signs of the time? Jesus said, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Church, I believe the world is ripe for God's judgment to come upon it. If I were you, in days like this, I'd make sure that I was saved. Do you know for certain that if Jesus comes today, that you've been forgiven of your sin. That you have a relationship with Him. Listen to one more warning from the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. I want to point something out there. Did you hear what it said? You can be changed. You can be forgiven of sin. You don't have to continue living in sinful ways. You can be changed. Last week, the state of California passed a law that you cannot teach reparative therapy. It's against the law. You cannot sell books and materials that teach. You can change. Friend, that's the first step to outlawing the sale of the Bible. Did you know that? Because the Bible says you can change. The Bible says that there were some of you that were that were involved in sin, but Jesus came and you received Christ and, and you believed in His death and burial and resurrection and the Spirit of God filled you and you've been forgiven and not only have you been forgiven, but you've changed. 
Folks, I call that reparative therapy, amen? I'm glad God changes us from the inside out. Have you placed your faith in the Lord Jesus? Can you say, Pastor, I remember a time and a place when I was changed.